श्री कृष्ण गुरु महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माई हम्बल ओबे सेंसेस ऑल ग्लोरी टू शीला प्रभु पाय My obeisance is to you and all to the to all the devotees. Hare Krishna, Shiva Prabhu Pad Ki Jai. So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shiva Prabhu Pad. Uh, as Guru Maharaj is continuing uh, on Chaitanya Charita Mitra, and also he continued different topics in different days. Today he will be uh, continuing on. श्री चैतन्य चैत्य मिथम मध्य लीला चैप्टर ट्वेंटी टू सिक्सटी सिक्स वर्स Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda Just one minute I will be I will return in a second <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Shastra Yukta Cha Nipuna Nipuna Sarvatadrinanis Chaya Ham Proud Asrado 
Vikariya Savakta Vyutamo Mataha. Translation One who is expert in logic and in understanding the revealed scriptures, who is always and who always has firm conviction and deep faith that is not blind, is to be considered a topmost devotee in devotional service. This verse appears in Bhakti Rasamatu Sindhu 1 to 17 by Srila Rupa Goswami. So we were um, explaining yesterday the three different levels of devotees according to their level of faith. First class, second class, and third class. So this verse follows that series of that verse in a series of discussions on the different levels of devotees according to their level of faith. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine, Nirvishesa Sunyavadi, Pastyatya De Satarine, Panchakalpa Tarubhischa, Kripa Sindhu, Vehevacha, Patitanam Pavane Vyo, Vaishnava Vyo Namaha Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So in this verse we are getting some of the characteristics of that faith that is the topmost and that, and that is considered to be a devotee in the topmost execution of devotional service, expert in logic and understanding the revealed scriptures, firm conviction and deep faith that is not simply blind but is supported by scriptural evidence and explained in through expert logic. Next verse. Shastra Yukta Nahijani, Dhridhasrata Van, Vajyama Arikari Se, Mahabhagyavan. One who is not very expert in argument and logic based on the video scripture, who, but who has firm faith and is considered a second class devotee, he also must be considered most fortunate. Now, this uh, explanation here fits most of us in the society in that we're not always expert in arguments and do not have so much knowledge of revealed scripture, but we are uh, convinced that devotional service is everything. And because of that, because of that simple but firm faith, and this is called the second class devotee and one who is most fortunate. Okay. Ya stradadishu anu ani puna stradavam saltu madhyamaha. Translation He who does not know scriptural argument very well but who has firm faith is called an intermediate or second class devotee. So this is by Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamatu Sindhu 1 to 18. Now this confirms the previous verse and adds to the understanding of the second class devotee who is known as the intermediate devotee. Mm -hmm. Next verse. Yahara Komala Strata Se Kanista Jana Kramya Kramya Tenhu Bhakta Haibe Utama. 
One whose faith is soft and pliable is called a neophyte. But by gradually following the process, he will rise to the platform of the first class devotee. We're getting some of the characteristics of the neophyte or the third class faith. Uh, soft and pliable means in contrary, contrast to arguments, he cannot defend the position of devotional service, nor can he depend, defend his execution of devotional service with scriptural arguments, logic, and reasoning. But if he continues to follow the process, he will rise to higher levels. Yabhavad Komala Strata Salkinisto Niga Gadvite. Translation, one whose faith is not very strong, who is just beginning, should be considered a neophyte devotee. So Rupa Goswami continues to describe those on the very basic level or third class devotee, also known as neophyte. And this position is not meant to be situated as something that one continues on. One has to move away from the neophyte stage to at least the second stage, the intermediate stage, in order to, to actually make progress in devotional service. Even the intermediate stage, the middle stage, one can develop pure love for God. But on this stage, no. This neophyte, uh, he's easily swayed by contrary arguments. He executes devotional service simply under the instructions of the spiritual master, but has no understanding of the importance or the efficacy of those instructions. Basic, we might say, also could be called a sentimental devotee, a devotee who does not know how to discriminate between different classes of devotees, the first class, second class, and third class, cannot see the connection between the, the, uh, the materialists on different levels of their material life and how well, one is pious, one is impious, and one is a mixture. In other words, their knowledge is very theoretical at best, but not even fi fixed, even in theory. So well, this is neophyte, and it's meant to be uh, a stage of development and not a stage of permanency. Rati Prema Tatratma Mie Bhakta Taratama Ekadasa Sade Tara Kariyache Lakshana. A devotee is considered superlative or superior according to his attachment and love. In the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the following symptoms have been given. Purport. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has stated that if one has developed firm faith in Krishna consciousness, he is to be considered an eligible candidate for further advancement in Krishna consciousness. Those who have faith are divided into three categories, Uttama, Madhyama, and Kanista, first class, second class, and neophyte. A first class devotee has firm conviction in the revealed scriptures, and is expert in argument according to the Shastras. He is firmly convinced of the science of Krishna consciousness. The Madhyaman Adhikari or second class devotee has firm conviction in Krishna consciousness, but he cannot support his convictions by citing Shastric references. The neophyte devotee does not have the firm faith. In this way, the devotees are typed. And so again, just a re hashing of the three or three a redescription 
of these three categories in a very simplified way. And this is analogous to the purport we read yesterday from the Bhagavad Gita, ninth chapter, verse number three, describing the three levels of faith. The standard of devotion is also characterized in the same way. A neophyte believes that only love of Krishna or Krishna consciousness is very good, but he may not know the basis of pure Krishna, pure Krishna consciousness or how one become, can become a perfect devotee. Sometimes in the heart of a neophyte, there is attraction for karma, jnana, or yoga. When he is free and transcendental to mixed devotional activities, he becomes a second class devotee. When he becomes expert in logic and can refer to the Shastras, he becomes a first class devotee. The devotees, the devotees are also described as positive, comparative, and superlative in terms of their love and attachment for Krishna. And that will require some explanations of those three categories, positive, comparative, and then superlative. And that, is, I don't think it's done here, but let's see. It should be understood that a Madhyaman Arikari, a second class devotee, is fully convinced of Krishna consciousness, but cannot support his convictions with Shastra references. A neophyte may fall down by association with non devotees because he is not firmly convinced and strongly situated. The second class devotee, even though he cannot support his position with Shastra reference, can gradually become a first class devotee by studying the Shastras in association with a first class devotee. However, if the second class devotee does not advance himself by associating with the first class devotee, he makes no progress. There is no possibility that a first class devotee will fall down even though he may mix with non devotees to preach. Conviction and faith gradually increase to make one in Uttama Arikari a first class devotee. So now we're getting further um, clarifications on the three categories and their characteristics. So it's incumbent that in the execution of devotional service, we always look towards moving through the process by making advancement from one stage to another. Now these three categories of faith are also analogous to the nine stages of bhakti, Adastrata, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anartanivritti, Ruchi, Nishta, Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, Baba, and Prema. Rupa Goswami recites this verse, which is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, describing the nine stages of devotional service. The most important stage for advancement in Krishna consciousness is Bhajana Kriya. Bhajana Kriya means that after associating with and getting a feel of the process in devotional service, one has to take shelter in a formal way to, the, to a bona fide representative of Krishna, the pure devotee spiritual master. Then under his guidance, one can clearly do two things or understand two things. One, what is the philosophy? What philosophy really means that knowledge that is indicative of a particular goal. Um, and what is the practice that in, by which the philosophy is applied? Application of the knowledge has to be done according to the instructions given by the spiritual master. 
To have the knowledge without the application remains on a theoretical level. And theory is not um, what we say strong enough to carry one through the different stages. One has to start to develop the understanding of the theory in practice. And that is called realization. And that realization awakens a level of bhakti within the heart, which formulates a certain consciousness, which becomes the person's spiritual nature. In other words, we're cutting through our material coverings and are revealing our spiritual existence through knowledge and application of knowledge in devotion. So to know the knowledge without engaging in devotional service means to remain what we say uh, on a theoretical level, which is somewhat between the neophyte stage and the second stage, more or less it's on the neophyte stage. Theory will not get you very far, but it's foundational to understanding realization. Just give me one second. I'm going to need another break. I'll be right back. Okay, back to, uh, so this is a little bit of the uh, analysis of how the activities of devotional service in the application of the knowledge given brings about movement through the different levels of advancement. And therefore here we see um, two aspects for the Uttama Arikari. Um, he has knowledge of the scriptures and can present that knowledge in a convincing way to any class of persons in any in, in any in any conflict with any type of uh, opposition and that is the uh, first that is the first class devotee second class um, may not be able to do that, but he's fixed and will not fall down. And the Neovite is, if they associate with the non-devotees and hear contrary statements, they also will become victimized and may also go away. So you'll see the different levels and the characteristics. So therefore, scriptural knowledge is foundational for our advancement in Krishna consciousness. Now, Srila Prabhupada also explains something in relationship to that, which seems to be not contrary, but parallel to that. And that is that he even says 
if the devotee is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and has firm faith in the process and in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and even though they um, do not have any, they don't study scripture, they don't uh, so much have uh, working knowledge of the philosophy and be able to present it in accordingly, still they are good. In other words, they're fixed in Krishna consciousness. But it seems like in order to come to that level without that knowledge requires good association and possibly their uh, pious activities in previous lives and in this life have led him to that type of faith that doesn't require much knowledge, but is fixed in the process itself. <laughs> in other words, Prabhupada, if they, they understand that the Hare Krishna mantra is everything and they're chanting in that way with that faith, they are as good as those who are fixed in Krishna consciousness. They are fixed also. So we see people, some people don't have a tendency for knowledge or study of the scriptures or even to hear transcendental knowledge, just like we're presenting this daily uh, uh, class. And we see how many people are actually, I mean, there's, it's available and many people are aware of it, but how many are actually interested in learning deeper the knowledge? Very few, or maybe you might even say, well, there's a few that will hear it later on, but they can't ask questions when they hear it later on. And that becomes a problem also, because a lot of times if you're listening carefully to the knowledge being presented, your mind will start to think in relationship to situations which present themselves as a, a, a situation where you have to, you need clarification, understanding, and knowledge of application of the philosophy, and therefore questions come up and are important like that. So we encourage everyone to come and be part and, and also hear in such a way that you can start to think in relationship to your own understanding and your own application of this knowledge. Okay. Um, we, I think we're, we won't go any farther today um, in the, Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you very much for nice wisdom. And uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, if you have any questions, comments, any relation, you can unmute yourself now. Also, you can switch on your video, please. Uh, it will be really great if we can have 100% everybody on video. You can switch on. Uh, it's a nice opportunity. Uh, Guru Maharaj, do you want me to summarize in few words or is that okay? We can continue. Um, well, let's see if there's no questions then you can do a summary. But if there's a question right away then we can go into the questions. Sure, Guru Maharaj, sure. Yeah. Radha Vinodri Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to um, I, I was wondering why you were speaking about uh, knowledge that uh, as uh, spiritual knowledge, I mean, actual knowledge and uh, our realizations are connected. Uh, is it possible to, to lose knowledge? And uh, if it is, then what can cause it? Um, well, there's, 
Kali Yuga is you know, Manda Sumanda Mateo Manda Bhagyu Padataha that the tendency for remembrance is reduced by the effects of this age. People's minds, in a general sense, cannot remember. Prabhupada makes that understanding in a comparative way, in which he explains that a real Brahmin will never forget anything they've ever heard. And then he, he, he recited an example where one Brahmin <clears throat> was at a bathing gap. <coughs> he was taking a bath and two men were there. And there was an argument between those two men. Uh, he happened to hear the argument, although he had nothing to do with it. And um, so then the argument became quite serious and it wound up in a court case. And uh, so one of the men in the court case said, well, there was a Brahmin. He was there. I'm going to call him for a witness. And so they found the Brahmin. He came to the court and he said, I don't know what is what they were, you know, what is the reason, but this is what I heard. And he was able to remember and repeat everything he had heard. So our minds are somewhat uh, less, uh, what we say, receptive and able to retain what we, and this is the effects of Kali Yuga. And the more you're free from sense gratification, the more you can remember, because sense gratification causes one to forget. <laughs> Sense, uh, transcendental knowledge. But then there's always ways to, what we say, increase the ability to remember. And there are ways you can do that. And one of the ways is to practice reciting and learning, or learning and reciting verses from the scriptures. And that helps to sharpen the mind and helps to increase, create a, a clearer understanding of, of the uh, ability to remember. In other words, it becomes easier to remember. The mind is, is an organ and it has to be used. We generally don't use much of our mind. Most of the mind remains asleep. We use about 10 to 15% of our mental powers. The rest remain dormant. And, uh, so exercising the mind by hearing, by reading, uh, by writing, uh, helps to increase the ability of the mind for recall. recall. And also the secular society also gives some type of um, practical experimental teachings on how to bring about better memory. And some of it's good. But one of the ways in the most simplified form is that every, anything you want to remember, write it down. <laughs> And uh, is knowledge uh, that much connected to memory? Because I, I was just thinking that uh, uh, as I heard that there is, there is uh, this realized knowledge and uh, how much that is connected to, to memory. Emotions more connected to memory than, than general knowledge. So if a knowledge comes in an emotional uh, avenue and emotional expression it becomes more easier. So just like in, in the general set, they say in general, women have better memories than men because they are more in tune with their emotions than men are. And therefore, when you connect uh, something to the emotional level, the impression of that knowledge is greater and more long-term. But 
the men have also emotions too, but you women are more more governed by emotions and men are more governed more by rationalizations. But doesn't that also can cause troubles because sometimes uh, emotion just uh, clouds uh, the intelligence. So I, I just had this experience that. Well, from the intelligent point of view, yes, but from the memory point of view, no. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I, I see. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's clear now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the understanding of what you hear and memorize needs to be clarified and supported by, you know, Shastra or Guru or Sadhu. Thank you very much. But we and the mind can be exercised and practiced, and there you can increase the quality or the capacity of memory through exercising your mind according to where you want to apply that knowledge, that memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, actually. Uh, I'm happy you said that because I, I tend to forget this part and uh, and uh, I, I really should uh, should should use the uh, use my mind properly and and exercise. Yeah, thank you very much. One of the ways to to sharpen your mind is to read things that are philosophically different difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. It forces you to really concentrate on what's what's being said and to compare what's being said to what your your understanding is already. And in that comparative, you come to a higher understanding. So sometimes it's good. It's like you know, certain philosophical teachings are very difficult to break through. But it's good exercise for the mind. Just like the Brahma Samhita, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's commentaries on the Brahma Samhita is a nice exercise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, and, uh, and just some of Srila Prabhupada's purports in Chaitanya Charitamrita require a lot of thought. The Chaitanya Charitamrita purports are a step up in terms of depth of philosophical teachings than Srimad Bhagavatam. Purports, I'm saying, not, not the verses. Yeah, I, I experienced that because uh, a few months ago I started to read Chaitanya, Chaitanya Charitamrita and, and I was really surprised how much, uh, how, how much more difficult it is to understand and uh, I Sometimes I just have this feeling that uh, on my level, I, I'm not, e not even able to understand some things because, for example, this creation, it uh, many times come, comes uh, back to the, in the scriptures and, and somehow I, it, it's still to a high level for me. <laughs> I just have this feeling, but, but uh, well, we, at the same... We should have this idea that, it's be, and that I can't do it. Mm -hmm. We should understand that there is a process for getting to that understanding. If you're willing to go through that route. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very encouraging for me actually that I see that there are devotees who actually <laughs> understand these things. So so I just see that it's it's possible. But uh, but yeah, probably this is a process and uh, and just also repeatedly reading the same thing over and over again probably also helps. Yeah, also having that knowledge available through other devotees is just as almost as good as having it yourself. All you have to do is refer to them and then you get the not understanding. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare. Thank you. Sri mm -hmm. Devi. Thank you, Guru. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. 
Uh, my question is about defending the scriptures at um, whatever level we are at. We may not be very knowledgeable or have complete grasp of the scriptures, but if we are asked to defend, how we can know how to speak in such a way that what we are saying is actually defending the scriptures given our limited uh, knowledge and understanding, or it's better to say, you know, I will ask a senior devotee to talk with you. And I think that will be better than my saying something which uh, may not be uh, fully correct like that. It's easy. All you have to do is repeat what you heard from the authorities. Those the authorities who are giving that knowledge clearly and correctly, we have to do is repeat them. Hmm. That's the purpose of hearing. We hear, we remember, and we can repeat. So we simply repeat what we hear according to whatever level of understanding we have. We simply repeat whatever level we are at. It, it doesn't mean that just because we are not Uttam Adhikari, we should not speak. No, then yeah, right, you should speak. But when you have realization of what you're saying, it has more effect upon the hearer. Mm. But still, if you're repeating, you're repeating the authorities. Prabhupada, you would use the example of a little child he doesn't know much, but he heard from his father, so he just speaks what his father said. And that is just as good, in the sense that he's giving it in the same way. Although mm. he may not understand it or realize it, he's not changing it. He's simply repeating it. Thank you very much. That is and very We don't have to kind of say, we don't have to say, well, we say, this is what my spiritual master has taught me. Therefore, this knowledge is correct. So mm -hmm. not only are you repeating it, but you're giving the source is a perfect source. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the source of knowledge is also just as important as the knowledge itself. Right, right. We should be able to quote the pure devotee. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That's uh, very helpful, actually. Yeah. You'll see if you listen to Prabhupada, when you listen to Prabhupada's lectures, he quotes, but he also refers many times, not always, to the authority who has said it previously. He was, he'll leave a quote from scripture mentioning the past times that it's refer, that it's in relationship, or he'll quote the Acharya who's made the same statement. And that's authority. Okay. That gives okay. authority to your statement. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Sudha Mataji, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Babaji. Hare Krishna. Tanu Pranam Gurmaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Sound Lord is just like a pop of voice to you, So my question is pretty much about like a theory and application. So we are hearing every day and we are trying to apply, but also there is like uh, in this process, we see like a constant battle in the mind, um, material and spiritual. So by continuously hearing, will this battle end or like how should, because sometimes like uh, I feel like overwhelmed um, uh, when I hear and I'm trying to actually, you know, like a frame in my mind, okay, this is not uh, spiritual, this is material. So I find it hard uh, to come to a conclusion, uh, which is um, right and which is uh, need to be applied. Well, whatever you hear, reference, reference with other statements that are of the similar nature. Once you get the reference, and then the reference supports whatever you're hearing. Yeah, if, if someone says something and then they refer to someone else who has also said it, and then, they refer, and then there's another reference to someone who is more reputable 
in their statements on the same subject, then that has greater amount of what we say efficacy or authority. If you can't discriminate between what's material and what's spiritual, then you have to hear from the from on that same subject that has been presented either through lectures or through the Bhagavatam, like that. The whole process of receiving knowledge is Shravanam. Shravanam is the gateway to knowledge. Shravanam Kirtanam. From Shravanam comes Kirtanam. From Kirtanam comes the preliminary stage of Smarnam. And then as Smarnam develops, it comes to the stage of firm understanding or complete understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we have that battle in the mind, so we have to uh, look for a reference and uh, so that. Uh, We'll stop thinking about it. Yeah. If you're hearing and it's clear, fine. Mm -hmm. If you're not, reference it. Where else is this mentioned? Okay. Ask that question. Where else did I hear from my spiritual master? Did I hear from Prabhupada? Did I hear it from the Shastras? Where else can I get support from what I'm hearing so I get a clear understanding of how much it is actually spiritual or is it material? I mean, Prabhupada would speak about modern morality, which is basically material, but he would use it in a supportive way to confirm spiritual principles. So, but to say that that modern morality is spiritual, no, it's not. It's supportive only. So you have to understand what is material, what is spiritual, and what is the difference between the two. The, the prime example is Arjun on the battlefield. He had arguments for not fighting. Krishna had arguments for fighting. And their arguments were contrary. And Arjun's arguments seemed nice, but they were material. And Krishna pointed that out and basically gave him the clear understanding. And that's the Bhagavad Gita in the very beginning. Yes, much. But is that a right process, Gurmaj? Like, uh, uh, it's like uh, my thoughts when it comes. So every time, like uh, any activity to we do, is it like a right process? Like to okay, think about like you know, uh, is it like a material or spiritual, or it should happen automatically? Like. Um, I'm not sure I understood your question. Uh, because. Um, uh, uh, the process what I'm going through in the mind is like everything I do, I think about it. Okay, is it like material or spiritual? So is it well, like that, the right thing to do? There, or there, is is a, there is a clear definition between the two. What is in relationship to Krishna is spiritual. What is not is material. That's the, um, that's the blueprint for understanding. Is it in relationship to Krishna and devotional service, or is it not? If it's not, it's material. Okay. Use that and you'll find everything will be easy. <clears throat> And then again, you might ask your question, well, do I know whether it's in relationship to Krishna or not? Then that much you have to understand. <laughs> That's preliminary. Is this supporting my devotional service or taking away for it? There's practical knowledge that can be used in devotional service, just like, for instance, in Kirtan. You know, the melodies that we use, um, 
there are melodies coming from Shastra and there's melodies that are not coming from Shastra. And so I mean, the application of the, the melody it can support the spiritual experience or it may simply have an effect on attracting the mind in a musical way, but doesn't really enhance the devotional aspect. So that's a little bit of a subtle point to, to look at. So you can think, is it spiritual or material? But then again, even certain material things when used in Krishna consciousness to serve Krishna become spiritualized. Yes, Gunaraj. Thank you. Yeah. You're cooking. Mm -hmm. You're cooking for Krishna or you're cooking for yourself. One's material, one's spiritual. It's cooking for Krishna is spiritual. Mm. Yeah. It's devotional service. Mm -hmm. If you're cooking for Krishna and you're thinking, I'm going to enjoy this once it's offered, then that's mixed devotional service. Mm -hmm. There is a mixture of a little bit of karma inside the bhakti. Mm -hmm. When the consciousness is purely uh, uh, directed towards Krishna for his pleasure and the activity is in line with the recommended way to perform the activity, then that's pure spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. That's, the, that's an example you can meditate on. You cook every day, right? So are you cooking for Krishna? You're cooking for the family, but you're offering everything to Krishna. But you're also thinking this is for Krishna. And really, it doesn't really matter if I like it or don't like it. We want to make sure Krishna likes it. <laughs> we want to do it in the best possible way. <laughs> For Krishna's pleasure. Yeah, I'm practicing that Guru Maharaj. Right now, I just think about okay, what my kids like, but I still also think about okay, I need to offer today to Krishna. Well, if, yeah, kind of if you cook, if what if you cook what you like and you offer to Krishna, that's that's also devotional service. But there is that element of personal gain in there. But if you think, what does Krishna like? And you cook that, then that is, uh, and Krishna also, he's a person, he has likes and dislikes. And then, then you find out from the scriptures, from the spiritual master, what Krishna likes. He likes bhakti, of course, but when you fine tune that bhakti, you know that there's certain things. Give me an example. <clears throat> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We can do kirtan in front of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We do. We do Hare Krishna kirtan. He loves that. But one thing he really loves is one particular bhajan that you sing. And if you sing that, that pleases him automatically. Because he loves that particular bhajan. Hare Hare Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha. Yadavaya Madhavaya Kesavaya Namaha, Gopago Vindaram Srimadu Sudan, Giridari Gopinath Madan Mohan. He loves that bhajan. So they say if you want to please and make an effort to please Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you, uh, you know, chant that. So we, we do that, we chant that along with the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra to give an added pleasure to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he likes that bhajan. Mm -hmm. So when you know these different things, then you can think. Just like if you're married and you don't know anything about your husband, 
And how do you know what to do to please him? But you learn what he likes and what he, he doesn't like. So in the same way, Krishna is a person. We learn what he likes and what he doesn't like. <laughs> and we try to do the things that he likes in a way that is devotional. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So it's important to... Does that make sense? Yes, Guru Maharaj. It's important to understand the likes of Krishna and do what pleases him instead of thinking about... We should be thinking like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'll practice it. I'm not there yet, but definitely I'll practice that. Your blessings. Thank you. Well, don't worry where you're not. Just go where you want to go. <laughs> Try to get where you want to go. Wherever you are, just move forward. Yes, good mm -hmm. I have yeah. one more question, if it's okay. Maybe Let, if let's come back to you. We'll come. We'll yeah. come back to you, and we'll go to the next person. Okay. And then we'll, yeah, we'll come back again. Namrata Mataji, if you can please go ahead. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Guru and all glories to Gauranga. Uh, am I clear? Am I clear enough? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Maharaj, uh, whenever I chant the uh, holy name, before that, I pray to uh, uh, the Panch Tattva, then I offer the Vaishnava Pranam, then uh, I I pray to uh, Namacharya, Srila Prabhupada, and the Guru. So, what should be the uh, uh, you know the order of uh, offering the uh, prayers? Well, because you, you find it, you'll find it in our our uh, song books. The Mangala Charana is offered in a certain sequence. So some of those prayers you mentioned are in the Mangala Charana. So you can sequentially, you can put it in sequence accordingly. Mm -hmm. But we always start with Guru. And then we, we go to Guru, and then we go to higher levels of great personalities. And then we move into... Um, we move into Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we move into Krishna. And after, after Krishna, we move into Srimati Radharani. And then we conclude with the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which is a combination of Radharani and Krishna in one. So if you know the, just look up the Mangala Charana and you'll see the sequential prayers. Just like we say, Omagyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Samatai. So that's the first prayer. The Chaksu Maritam Yenatas my Sri Guru. Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapita. That's the next prayer. And Vandeham Ham Shri Guru Shri Atam. And that's all Guru until it finally gets to the end. And then we get into, um, after that, it's, uh, it's Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then it's the Panchatattva. And then after that, it's Krishna. And then it's after, after that, it's Krishna. And there's different features of his manifestations in the Vrindavan scheme from the three levels of worship, from Madan Mohan to Govindaji, and then to Gopinath. And then after that, it's Srimati Radharani. And then after that, it's the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The Mangala Charana is the guideline for offering prayers in a sequential way. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Actually, I referred to um, one of the devotees. So uh, they were telling me I was uh, uh, offering my prayers in the decreasing order. So you should confirm with your Guru Maharaj. So, uh, I was asking this. I think, uh, yes, I'll refer to Mangala Charana. Thank you for that. Yeah. The Shilahari Das Thakur is not in the Mangala Charana, but 
you can add his prayer um, as part of Guru Parampara because he is he is Namachari, he's the guru for teaching, you know, pure devotional service in the form of chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra. So you'll see also the another another sequential series of prayers is the uh, Prem Dwani prayers. The Prem Dwani prayers are the ones we we chant after the kirtan. So we say, you know, uh, um, what do we say? Jai uh, Om Vishnu We we start with Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta, then we go to Guru Parampara, then we go to Haridas Thakur, then we go to the Six Goswamis, then we go to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then we go to Radha and Krishna, then we go into the different, uh, yeah, like that. These are the Prem Dwani prayers. Like that. So you see, there is a uh, series here. You can also see how your prayers fit into this and adjust them accordingly. Okay. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. And thank you, uh, uh, Prabhuji, for referring the links Thank you very much. Okay, Desire Tree, you can find everything you need on Desire Tree. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Radha Vinodhi Mataji, uh, you have raised your hand. You have further question, please. Uh, yes, yes, thank you very much. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, you mentioned that uh, this uh, example of uh, cooking uh, for Krishna, and I was wondering that sometimes it happens to me that uh, when I'm cooking for devotees, I have uh, more that uh, in my meditation to please the devotees. And uh, is it a problem or or how it? Uh, no, that's bhakti. Okay. If you want to please the devotees in your in your service of cooking, that's bhakti. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, there's nothing material about that. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, there is one question also uh, by Brasho Prabhu on the chat. Uh, he has asked, Hare Krishna, dear Gurudev, how can Madhya associated with Uttam Bhakta in this age, and not always they are close to us. How can um, a Madhyam Arikari associate with an Uttama Arikari? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Well, to find an Uttama Arikari is not so easy. <laughs> Most of the persons who are fixed in preaching if they are on the Uttama platform, they don't function on that platform. They function on the intermediate stage. They function on the second platform. Just like we say, Jayom Vishnupad Paramahansa Pariva Jakacharja. Now, those two statements, Paramahansa is the topmost platform. Pariva Jakacharya is the stage down from that. One is Babaji, absorption in bhajan on the lotus feet of the Lord constantly. And the other one is um, uh, preaching. Now, in the, in the, in the ver verses we discussed, they use the word Uttamam, not as Adhikari, but as topmost. So in those verses, we're not talking about Uttama Adhikari, we're talking about those who are on the Uttamam platform of knowledge. Uttamam Adhikari doesn't preach because there's nobody to preach to. Everyone is higher than he is. And he sees everyone on that level. That's why the Uttama 
has come down to the Parivrakacharya stage for the sake of preaching. So um, to search out an Uttama Adhikari, you have to know that because they don't exhibit those characteristics, because those characteristics means they're pretty much doing bhajan, their own bhajan. Although they have the highest knowledge, they don't preach. Therefore, our movement is situated on the platform of intermediate, second class, or uh, madhyama adhikari. And therefore, all the preachers, even if they're on the highest platform, act on the second class platform for the sake of preaching. Because Madhyamam has to distinction, distinct, has to make four distinctions. The worship of the Lord, friendship with the devotees, preaching to the innocent, and avoiding the atheist non-devotees. They have to make those four. These are the four characteristics of the Madhyamadikari. The Uttamam doesn't make those four distinctions. So if you're talking about Adhikari, that's one thing. If you're talking about uh, levels of knowledge, then you have to see <coughs> by your own experience who has who is firmly fixed in Shastra and can present that Shastra. And so we have that verse. What is that verse? Tasmat Guru Prapadyante Jigyasa Seya Uttama Sabde Parai Jirad Nishnatma Brahma Upasrayasrayam this verse, what is it about? It's saying that ultimately, in order to sit on the Vyasa song, one has to be able to present arguments in contrary to all other arguments and defeat all other arguments with the knowledge of Shastra. Yeah. Yeah. The qualify, okay, qualification of a bona fide guru is that he has realized the conclusion of the scriptures by deliberation and is able to convince others of these conclusions. That's one of the qualities of a bona fide spiritual master. Now that is Uttama Adhikari, and then you have different, but, but those persons are preaching. So they're on the Madhima platform, but they have complete knowledge. So in the category of knowledge, even a, Uttam, even a Madhima can have complete knowledge of Shastra. Sorry, Guru Maharaj, just realized that Dusha Prabhu has actually logged off. So hopefully he will get it in recorded. Maybe he didn't like my answer. I'm sure it will be some network issue. <laughs> um, Guru Maharaj, we still have two hands raised, one Sudha Mataji and one Sukhava Mataji. Uh, I hope we can take these two questions, although it's nine minutes over. That's all right, no problem. Uh, Sukhava, we can we'll take first questions first and second questions after. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Please accept my humble obeisance. Zog, Guru Srila Prabhupada, all Guru Srila Lotus Feet. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is <clears throat> how to remember the Sanskrit verses because I'm finding it very difficult to remember them. Is there any way you can uh, go on? Uh, I, you're having a difficult time doing what? Remembering the Sanskrit of the verses, the Sanskrit version. I can, I can give you a formula for memorization. Okay. Please, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, write it down or else you'll forget it. Yeah. <laughs> you can learn a verse in less than five minutes wow. if you follow this pattern. Okay. Okay, good one. I'm ready. 
Okay. You learn the first line of the verse. Mm -hmm. And then you keep repeating it until you until it becomes memory. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Learn the first line. Mm -hmm. Repeat it until it becomes memory. Mm -hmm. Learn the second line. Mm -hmm. Repeat that line until it becomes memory. Mm -hmm. Then go back and repeat the first and second lines together. Oh, okay. So not together, but oh, everything together is making it difficult. So yeah. Learn the first line. Memorize it, learn mm -hmm. the second line, memorize it, mm -hmm. and then repeat the first and second line. Okay. Learn the third line, memorize it, then repeat the first, second, and third line together. Okay. Do that with the last line, and then you can learn a verse easy. Just for instance, Sarva Dharma Pradikshit Mum. So that's the first line. And you say Sarva Dharma Pradikshit Mum. Mum may come Saranam Vaja. And then you go back over. Sarva Dharma Pradikshit Jam. Mum may come Saranam Vaja. You keep repeating it until you until it somewhat sinks in. Aham Twam Sarva Pape Byo. You learn that and you go back, Sarva Dharma Pradiksha Jam, Mamme Kam Saranam Pajam, Aham Twam Sarva Pabe Vyo. And then you learn the last line, Moksha Yashyami, Ma Suchaha, and then you repeat the whole verse. And now I'll also tell you a good time for learning verses is just before you take rest at night. Learn those verses at that time, then go to sleep, and then when you wake up, immediately start repeating the verse. Okay. It has a tendency to go into the psyche when you learn it in the evening, and then you go to sleep, and then when you wake up, it's still there. Mm -hmm. When you do something after that, you tend to min minimize the, ten the, the force of the memory. <laughs> well, this is some practical ways to learn. So learning verses at that time and repeating them when you wake up, they pretty much stay with you. And then don't be eager to learn a lot of verses, but, but then again, once you've learned the verses and you can repeat it, look for opportunities to speak it. Mm -hmm. Just speak it to your, to your two children, to your husband, to people in general. Mm -hmm. And that will make that verse part of your, your collective knowledge. Mm -hmm. And even better is then when you give classes, look for opportunities to to repeat the verses that you learned in the classes. Mm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. If you follow that formula, you can mm. learn many, many verses. <laughs> Sri Dev, you writing that down? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I've written it down. Good. Everyone should write it down for learning verses. Also, Guru Maharaj, you mentioned that Uttama Dikari does not, um, he treats everyone at the same level. So, is there any particular reason they treat near fights as the well, they, they see themselves as being the most fallen, and okay. they see everybody as being more devotional than them. Even the non devotees are more devotional than them because they say 
Well, they're, they're engaged in serving Krishna's external energy, who is a pure devotee. Her name is Maya. Mm -hmm. So they're following a pure devotee, Maya. So they are, you know, more advanced than I am. Mm -hmm. That's not some something you can just, you can't surreptitiously apply that principle to yourself, nor can you understand it. It's very difficult to understand. Forget applying to myself. <laughs> I just so difficult. You can't. You can't understand it. It's not possible to understand. But it's a re it's a it's a certain level. Now, Srila Prabhupada, in his last days before he departed the world, was apologizing to many of the people around him for speaking the way he spoke. When he was leaving the world, he entered into his, his, his consciousness of being an Uttama Adhikari. He was an Uttama Adhikari, but in order for preaching, he came down to the second plat platform. Well, just before leaving his body, he was making statements like an Uttama Adhikari. Mm. Interesting. Thank you, Guru Mahārāj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sudha Mataji, please. Ah, yes, Ramji, thank you. Thank you, Guru Mahārāj. That uh, really also helps me. I also find it tough to memorize uh, slokas, so I can definitely try to apply your formula. Thank you so much. Um, so my question, Guru Mahārāj, choosing the association that fits you, um, because uh, we are at neophyte level, uh, we are constantly like influenced by the modes. Um, it's hard sometimes to understand like whether we are in right association because sometimes we are, we are very happy with the association and um, and we feel like uh, we are very comfortable and like that but suddenly like, like after a while we see the same association we are not very comfortable so this always happens and that case like can we just take association of books scriptures and uh, to the next level of association. That's all. That means as you make advancement, you'll be looking for persons who are more on your level to reciprocate, to associate with, to be with. Yeah. Just like when you come out of the, from the, material to the spiritual you want to associate with devotees more and then in that association you also want to associate with devotees who are more you know on your level okay. yeah. Yeah. and also good more sometimes like uh, um, when it comes to association um, when we associate with a person he might not be a devotee, but he's on at like a pious, he's more pious. And we feel very happy in that association. And sometimes we are in a devotee association and we are not very happy. And we also come across situations like that. So what should we do? Be happy. <laughs> <laughs> off the unhappy button and push the happy button. <laughs> so it's okay. You can't intellectualize everything. <laughs> you just kind of change your mood, that's all. <laughs> You're not happy? Be happy. <laughs> yes, <good. laughs> I can see you completely didn't understand my answer, but. <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking it's okay to associate with the um, person whom you are very happy, even though he's not a devotee, it's like that. <laughs> so. Well, you know, 
you want every B01 to be to come up to your standard, then you have to also learn to have them associate with different kinds of people. Yes. Yes. We resonate with people who we can associate. They have the same nature, they have the same likings. That's the whole principle of marriage. Marriage is based on similar nature, similar likings. Uh, and, but in our interact, you know, if you go to the store and you start buying something and you say to the guy giving you the thing, you know, um, I don't really want to associate with you because I don't like you, but <laughs> I'll just give me my product and here's the money and I'm going. <laughs> So don't try that. <laughs> the world is not meant to entertain us. <laughs> we are not the center of the world. <laughs> we have to adjust according to how best we can remain Krishna consciousness in every situation. Also. So it's mostly like we have to look deep inside us. Yeah. Huh? So it's mostly like we have to look inside within us what is there. So well if you have if you are in that association regularly, then you have to see whether you want to continue that. If it's a required association, then you have to adjust to make sure that there is progress in the association. Mm -hmm. We associate for different reasons. But we associate with devotees to serve them and to learn from them. That's our devotee association, to serve them and to learn from them. Mm -hmm. So mood is important, yeah. Yes, Kalmash, thank you. Is that okay? Uh, yes, Kalmaj. Thank you so much. Thank you. You sure? Uh, yes, Kalmaj. I'm still learning, but uh, yeah, it's very difficult for if me. If we don't know how to, uh, you know, it says that a river keeps going because it knows how to bend. A river, a river that doesn't bend gets stopped by whatever it runs into, but it knows how to keep going because it goes around. So there will always be obstacles in the world. People become obstacles, situations become obstacles. We have to learn how to bend in such a way as that we keep our Krishna consciousness foremost and we go, we keep moving in the right direction. Those who are rigid, who cannot bend, <clears throat> never really understand what life is about. <laughs> you have to bend without losing your direction. That's, that's the point. So in a neophyte stage, there are certain, certain types of associations that's threatening to you. As you grow more in devotional service, those same associations are not threatening anymore. Mm -hmm. And then when you grow to a higher level, everyone learns from you and you give them your association and they benefit. So be the association and then you can offer that in service to others. And then the devotee carries Krishna with them. If they carry Krishna with them, then they're giving Krishna to others when they or whoever they associate with. But if you can't, if you don't have that level, then try at least try to associate in such a way that you're in a mood for serving. Mm -hmm. That much we can do. We can always be, well, how can I serve? 
Uh, Nandini, you must have got so much work done tonight. I was watching. You haven't stopped moving since I started talking. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisances. Maharaj, I'm making prashad for the kids. They've just come from school, but I want to listen to your lecture as well. Well, I, I, I appreciate what you're doing. You, you are multitasking. And it's, Maharaj, it's, it's, also, it's also considered to be very good. Yeah, so, you know, I would love to sit and listen to the lecture, but I'm still working. I'm logged on and I'm making prashad for Krishna and kids. And I'm obviously, I want to, I want to listen to your lecture. I don't want to miss it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, that much I appreciate. Hare <laughs> Krishna Guru Maharaj. Okay, so um, in the chat, you'll find a lot of the statements we made tonight. You can refer back to uh, Vrindavan Nath has so nicely put things in writing so we can uh, copy them down and remember them. Ananda Gopika. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I'm coming your way on Saturday. Yes. I heard. Mm -hmm. I will be there. Okay, Thank you. good. I, will hope, I, will be, I hope to see you there. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. All right. Anything else before we end? So there are no further questions, Guru Maharaj, in chat or no hands raised. Okay. So um, let's see. Tomorrow is Wednesday and we'll continue. I hope that this particular topic you know, the different dimensions, aspects, principles of devotional service are interesting because devotional service is, is a great science. And if we study it, we also will be able to see where we fit in and becomes a, uh, a source of happiness, the knowledge that is available about devotional service. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much, Dr. Nectar. Uh, thank you, uh, all the devotees. Uh, Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Anand Koti Vishnu Brandi ki jai. Samaveer Bhakti Brandi ki jai. Thank you very those much. You, those of you who can tune in tomorrow at uh, uh, Ljubljana, uh, we have we have a visit from Kadamba Kanana Maharaj, and he will be giving the Srimad Bhagavatam class tomorrow at um, eight o'clock Central European time, which is one hour later than UK time. So um, we usually live stream everything. You just check the Ljubljana live stream. You can go and hear tomorrow's class. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare 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 Chaitanya. Sri Chaitanya and Swaha. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Tending. Thank you very much. Kava, Namrata, Valentina. Thank you very much. Jamarani, Shri Mati.
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. 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 A few of them Thank just you. disappeared now. Shashidar and Samadatri and Nandini. And Radhavi Nodini. <laughs> Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Ro. Glories to Srila Prabhupada, Hare Krishna. Thank you for the